Today we will be learning how to make a bond pricing and amortization schedule using Microsoft Excel 2007. My name is Jerry Sloan and I will be presenting today. We will be learning how to make the bond, how to determine the bond selling price and the bond, and making a bond price amortization schedule using the following functions: price, ABS, and IF. We will also be using absolute sell references. I already have the basics of the of the model set up. I have the maturity or par value of the bond, the number of years in the bond, the coupon rate of the bond, the market rate of the bond, the, and the number of payments per year. In this case, it is semi-annual, and the number of years is three. And the so I have the settlement date, that's when the bond was issued, as January 1st, 2006, and the maturity date is January 1st, 2009. Now the first thing we need to do is determine what the bond selling price is. So let's push F1, and we will find the price function. As you can see, it has instructions on how to make the bond. And if we scroll down, we see it gives what the, what the mathematical formula is of the price function, and also it gives descriptions of how you are supposed to use the function itself. Now, let's enter in the price function. And then, first, as you see down here, it shows exactly what you need to do. And so, we'll just reference the settlement date, then we'll push comma, reference the maturity, the rate, the market or yield, the redemption, which in this case we're going to enter 100 because of just the way the function works and then we put in the frequency or number of payments per year and basis we leave blank then we close that the parentheses and then what we have to do is we need to multiply this entire function by the the par value of the bond and then we have to divide it by 100 this is to handle the use of the 100 inside of this. We can't use the par value of the bond directly in this for reasons that we that they have not that Excel doesn't really explain. But this is the bond selling price. Now for the schedule itself, the first thing we should do is put down what the cash paid is. Now, as you should know, the cash pay that gets paid out every period is equal to the the par value of the bond multiplied by the coupon or given rate, face rate of the bond. We push enter, and we can see, as we can see, for a seven hundred thousand dollar bond, it is eighty four thousand dollars. Now, what we need to do is, because we want to use this number for every single cash payment, what we need to do is make these cell references absolute, and so we put dollar signs in front of the B's and the and the numbers. And then we can just grab this little square down in the lower right corner and drag it down. The next thing we need to do is take care of the interest expense, and that is determined by the carrying value of the bond multiplied by the market rate of the bond. Now for this one, what we need to do is we want to leave the carrying value. We want, we want to leave that. Not, uh, we want this to go down because we're going to drag these things down, and we want it to reference them accordingly but we want to keep the market rate absolute. We must also remember that for the market rate of the bond, we have to divide it by however what in, however many payments there are per year. In this in this case there are two, which and so we do that and we drag it down. I forgot to do that over here. So Divide that by this, make those absolute. Enter. We drag this down. Then we do amortization. Now what this is, we need to use ABS functions so that whether it is a premium or a discount, it will always be a positive number. Just enter. Just drag that down. And now what we need to do is use the if function. And this is one of the most important parts of the entire or schedule rather. Now let's look up the if function and what we need to do is we need to have 
a logical test, and then if the test is true, we will have a th uh, thing, and if it is false, we will have a different thing. Now, in this case, we want our logical test to be whether or not the maturity rate or par value is greater than or less than the bond selling price itself. Now, what I put down is that the maturity or par value is, and let's make those absolute because they are referring to these over here. What I have it here is that the maturity value is less than the bond selling price, which means that if it's true, we want it to be we want a premium we want the process that is used for premiums to be used. And that is in this case and that is the carrying value, and then you subtract away the amortization. And then for the false, we'll just do the opposite. We will sub we will add them. And then we close up the parentheses, push enter. And then we drag it down, and there we go. It all evened out in an equal 700,000. Let's switch it over to a discount. So we'll make the coupon rate 10% and the market rate 12%. As we can see, it starts out with $665,578.73, and the amortization is working properly, and it goes up to $700,000. And it also works if it is par. As you can see, there's no amortization, of course. And it just stays 700000 the carrying value, the whole way down. Now let's check to make sure it will work with a different amount. So we'll put in $100,000. Looks like it's working so far. And put it at a premium, and it's still working. Now let's go over what we did again making sure that you have area set up with your num with all the proper numbers you then take care of the bond selling price which is the price function and then that is referenced using the settlement date the maturity date the rate the yield the redemption value and the frequency now remember the redemption value needs to be 100 and then you multiply the entire function by the maturity or par value and divide it by 100 to get the proper price. And then for the cash paid, we make sure everything is absolute sell references, and we do the maturity rate times the coupon rate divided by two. The interest expense is the carrying value times the maturity times the market rate divided by two, and the amortization is the absolute is the absolute value of the cash paid minus the interest expense. And then finally the carry value of the bond, we use the if function, and then we have a logical test to determine whether or not the maturity value is greater than or less than the bond selling price itself. And then from that, we will determine whether we subtract away the amortization or add the amortization, subtracting for premiums and adding for discount. So let's save this. Bond amortization schedule. And we are done. Now remember, the key points in this were the absolute cell references, the if function, the ABS function, and the price function. Once again, my name is Jerry Sloan, and thank you for watching.